Hi everyone, what's up? Joshua here from Alternative Brewing. And today we have five of the available eight automatic tampers from Puck Press that are available on the market right now. Divided into the Q line of Puck Press, we have the Puck Press Mini, the Q1 Generation 5, and the Q2 Gen 5. And then representing the M line, we have the M2 and the M3. Now missing from this lineup is the M1, the M4, and M5. And we'll still cover these off in the video, but these are by far the most popular models within the M-Line range. Now, the main difference for the Q-Line of Puck Press is their capacity, and this will determine the environment that they are best suited for. And a spoiler alert here, if you are looking for a Puck Press for home use, then the Mini really is your only option, unless you have a lot of money and enjoy spending it. For the commercial use, well, there are a lot more options there, and this includes the M lineup of Puck Press. Now, these are separated by what brand, model, or make of grinder actually sits seamlessly on top of these Puck Presses. So imagine a Mythos 2 or a Malconig E65S, one of my favorite grinders of all time, on top of these bad boys, and that's the M line for you. Now, before we seamlessly get knee deep into this comparison video, I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Just give it a click, it's on the bottom of your screen right now. And then by hitting the subscribe and bell notifications, we'll be off to making more of the content that you wanna see. And of course, we do really appreciate it. So with that, let's press on and get into the video. So a quick first pit stop before we get started, let's cover off what they all have in common, which first is their controls. Now these are very intuitive to use. Adding or subtracting your tamp pressure is easy to do, but they do offer in the ranges that are available, something we're gonna look on in just a moment. There's your clean button on the controls as well, and this brings the tamp head down and holds it into position in order for you to give that tamp head a quick wipe down during shifts, press it again and it will retract. They all use the same non-stick coating to the tamp head, and this is used to reduce static electricity and clumping of coffee grounds during consistent use. And then they're all really quick at tamping. It's around 1.3 seconds a tamp cycle, which is like 2.6 seconds for a standard double tamp. They all also have access to a different tamp head diameter, from 53 millimeters all the way up to your standard 58, and even 58.3 millimeters for precision baskets. So they're basically gonna work for a majority of your espresso machines, whether it's commercial or for the home user. And each puck press comes with a 24 month warranty. Although each model puck press has a slightly different mileage to its warranty as well, so we're gonna compare this in the next section. So you'll notice the price difference with the Q-Line differs quite a lot, from under $1,000 to around $1,500 to well over $1,500 on the Q2. And don't be lured into thinking that you'll be picking up a bargain getting the Puck Press Mini for a busy commercial cafe, or vice versa when you have the Q2 at home. Other than unlocking some pretty cool extra features, it definitely feels like a little bit of overkill. And coming back to these capacities or mileages of the Q-Line Puck Presses, which is the biggest differential between them, the Puck Press Mini has a rating of up to 100 tamps per day, whereas the Q1, this is up to 300 tamps per day, and the Q2 has unlimited tamps. So we're looking at a light, medium, and heavy use. So the Puck Press Mini is great for home use, and even small businesses, offices, or perhaps even a food business that offers coffee as a side hustle, if you're looking for the consistency that a Puck Press brings to the quality and the workflow of an espresso setup, but not necessarily having a coffee rush or really looking to build on your coffee trade. Now the Q1, which is rated at 300 tamps per day, is perfect for that small to medium cafe or coffee shop. And we've certainly moved away from the home user at 300 coffees per day. This is still quite a low ceiling note for a busy coffee shop. So if you are a cafe serving under 300 coffees a day, then the Q1 Puck Press is for you. But if you do have a business and you're looking to build these sales and plan to be brewing more than 300 coffees per day within the next 24 month period, then it is better to look towards the Puck Press Q1 Q2 as an investment with unlimited tamp cycles. And this is the same with the M2, 3, and 5 of the M-Line Puck Press. Now, each Puck Press has its tamp cycle accumulating each time you use it. And you do wanna make sure that you're not exceeding these tamp cycles. With 75,000 tamps in two years with the Mini, 
200,000 TAMPS with the Q1, the M1 and the M4. And it's mainly the drive unit which does the heavy lifting for you and can eventually wear out. So ensuring you don't exceed these mileages of these puck presses can lengthen their lifespan significantly and within the two year period starting from purchase, any breakdowns will be covered under warranty. Also beyond that two years, these drive units can be purchased separately to keep the puck press on the bench. All right, so across the board with these puck presses, you either have a 10 to 30 kilogram range or a wider five to 30 kilogram range. And it's the Q2, the M2, three and five that all have that wider range of tamping. And then you're limited to 10 to 30 kilograms on the mini Q1 and M1 and M4. But if it's any consolation, when I've ever used a puck press, it's been around the 10 to 15 kilogram range that I've used, and I've rarely, if at all, ever changed it from there. All right, so the anomaly here for portafilter compatibility is the puck press Q1. And I'm not too sure why it's an anomaly, but all other puck presses can take single and double spouted portafilters, as well as naked handles, no worries. Whereas the Q1 can only do single and double spouted portafilters, not naked handles. So really the only scenario there where it might be a problem is if you're a cafe doing say up to 300 coffees a day and also using naked handles, you might wanna be looking at getting the Q2 for the best workflow. And when we look at cradle adjustment, within the Q line, it's only the Q2 that allows you to easily adjust the portafilter cradle via a screw thread from the bottom. And you can also do this on the M2, 3, 4, and 5. Now this makes it a little less hassle and much quicker to do, and you really only ever need to do this once. So on the other models, you do have to hold everything in place and then tighten it to make sure it's all level and even and a snug fit to your porta filter. It is a little bit more fiddly, but again, like I've mentioned, you kind of only ever do this once or every six months or so, and then you don't have to do it again. All right, so this is by far the most interesting part. There are a total of five tamping profiles available with Puck Press. Now you only get three of these on the Puck Press Mini and the Q1, but they have them all on the Q2 and then the full lineup of the M range as well. So let's take a look at all of these profiles, starting with those first three that they all share. So the first profile we'll look at is the Speedy Profile. This is the original puck press tamp and is designed for a fast workflow. That first tamp has force and then the second tamp is to polish at 1.3 seconds. The next is your precision profile. Now this prevents suction between the tamp head and the filter basket and then avoids lifting that coffee puck by retracting the tamp head slowly in the upwards direction. The first tamp is with force with a slow retraction and the second tamp is to polish at 2.1 seconds total. Then you have your single profile. Now this does what it says. It's a single tamp with force at 1.3 seconds, no polish. And then your last two profiles. You have your soft tamp, and this is designed with that extra soft pressure. It has a range of five to 15 kilograms. That first tamp is with slight force, and the second tamp is with polish at two and a half seconds. And then quite the opposite is your Hulk tamp. This is used to achieve a longer extraction time while using the same dose and grind coarseness. Your first tamp is with force, there is a second tamp with force and then a third tamp to polish at two and a half seconds. So these extra profiles that come with the puck presses do come in handy when running different coffees, maybe different grinders. And I can see the application, especially for baristas who want to experiment with these tamping profiles. But certainly even with the Mini and the Q1, these have that precision profile and this is gonna work really well, especially at home with the Mini, if you're using precision baskets of say 58.4 or 58.5. This is gonna stop that puck being sucked up during tamping. So after a long look at all the puck presses that are available, whether you're looking for a standalone puck press unit or one that sits under your espresso grinder within your cafe, it's almost as if the people at Puck Press have done all the work for you in terms of making it really easy which one you should go with. Of course, you can always get a puck press Q2 for tamping at home, but the mini would do just as well. If you are a medium sized cafe though, the Q1 or the Q2 are your options, unless you have a grinder that currently suits the M line range. 
which is quite a few options, as there are also compatibility plates that suit these, so you can add Matza grinders to the M range. Further saving space, the M range also has great cords that can be fed directly down into the bench, with then nothing popping out the back of the puck press and facing towards the customer, whereas the Q-Line doesn't have this. However, all of these puck press do come with a very long, generous cord, which comes in handy whether you're at home or in a cafe. And that's the complete comparison of automatic puck press tampers for you. So if you do have any further questions on these tampers, please throw them in the comment section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Thanks for watching to the end of this video. And of course, we'll see you in the next one.